Hello friends, this is Ewell Humphreys. Glad to be with you and share a word with you today on the Bible. I want to speak to you on a, on a word that I've entitled The Way to Please and to Praise God. The Way to Please and Praise God. And we need to do that. That's a good thing we need to do as Christians. Is to praise Him and to please Him. And I pray God that's what will happen in your life. That above all things you will seek to please God. Eh, and to praise Him. Book of Acts an 18th chapter. We find some ways that we can do this. In the Bible we see a read of the Apostle Paul. He had been to Corinth. He came down to Galatia. And uh, he stayed there a while. And then he finally went into Ephesus. And he was in there uh, a long while. But then in verse 21 it says that. Uh, he had to bid them farewell, saying, I must go by all means to keep the feast at Jerusalem, but I will return again to you if God wills. I will return if God wills. And so Paul had to depend on the will of God at all times. He said, I've been here with you now a good while, preaching and helping you to build your church. But he says, I, I'm going to have to leave and go to Jerusalem but I will return if God wills. And so it's an important thing to know that we need to live in the will of God. We need to follow His way. We need to live to please God by always seeking to do His will and to be in the center of His will for our lives. The Lord has a purpose for you. He said, I know my thoughts told you that they're good and not evil. And I have a plan for you. That, that I have a plan and I plan to give you hope and a future and so the Lord has a plan for us we need to follow him and the Bible teaches this is so good and so true that we need to recognize that fact when we pray we need to try to pray in the will of God we need to try to ask him for things that would please him and that would be a right in the sight of God as, for our, as well as our own needs we read in the book of 1 John, the 5th chapter, verse 14, it says, This is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. If we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And we know that if He hears us, then we know that we have the petitions that we desire of Him. And so we see then the importance of praying in the will of God. And so you say, well, how can we know that will? Well, usually, when you walk close to God, His will and yours become more and more together to the point where your desires will many times be His desire. And His desire for you will be your desire. And the thing that He wants for you will be what you want. And you'll pray thus accordingly because you'll feel this is something that I believe God would have me do. And you pray in the will of God, and He will answer. He will answer in the will of God. Sometimes the answer comes in a little different ways than we suspect, but it will come. I read a story of Tony Campalo, a preacher who was praying for a man in, in his church that was dying with cancer. And he prayed, and he laid his hands upon the man in, in the church service, and his wife stood with him, and he prayed for healing, healing for his body healing for his life. And when he was through, he looked at her and he said, I believe God's healed this man. Well, he went on and the man, the man, uh, according to the wife, she, she called him and she said about three weeks later, and she said, I want you to know that my husband died. And uh, the preacher was a little disappointed because he said he thought sure he had healed him. But she said, I want to tell you something. She said, for many years we have not been real close. For many years we have gone our kind of separate ways. We lived together as husband and wife, but we've never been close in our affection and our love and our commitment to each other. But she said, in these last three weeks, he's a changed man since you prayed for him. She said, he calls on the Lord. He reads the Bible with me. He tells me he loves me. He tells me he's all right. He's going home and he's happy. He tells his children, all oh, praise God, he's asked them to forgive him for not loving them more and telling them more about Jesus. 
And he said, she said, these last three weeks have been wonderful. And now he's gone. And then she said something that the preacher said he will not forget. She said, he was not cured, but he was healed. <laughs> he wasn't cured, but God healed him. Healed him inside the internal, eternal part of him, the soul and that spirit, and where he's gone to be with God. God hears we need to pray always in the will of God for people. And now we read over in Colossians, the fourth chapter, something else that will please God and praise the Lord. In the fourth chapter, verse 6, it says, Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how to answer every man. Let your speech, let, whatever you say, your words, let them be like, be like, uh, be always with grace. That is love, forgiveness, concern, oh, grace, and full of mercy, full of grace and love and, and commitment toward others. Full of grace that encourages and lifts up people. Words with grace seasoned with salt. Salt seasons. And we need it seasoned with salt. Now, you don't want to put too much salt. If you do, it'll ruin it. But salt can be those things that are warnings. You need to quit worrying. You need to, to stop holding grudge against somebody. You need to forgive that person that, you're, that you have all against. You need to do more praying. You're not praying as much as you should. You see, that's salt. But it's seasons. Too much of it, it's too much. Oh, no. Grace. You can, can't have too much grace. Encourage, lift up in love. But also, let your words be as salt. I may talk to someone right now, and you need to know that you need to get back to your church. You're not going to church. You need to find a way to serve God in your church like you used to. It may be a word to you that you've lost touch with your wife and you need to go to her and ask her forgiveness and tell her you love her and that she is your wife dear to your heart. You need to, you need to do some things that will enhance your relationship with others. And so God will bless you. Let your speech be gracious. God loves you, dear friend. God loves you so much he gave his life for you upon the cross at Calvary. God loves you so much that he's prepared a place for you in heaven and you've got a home waiting for you. God loves you so much. I want you to know that at the same time we need to deny ourselves and keep self out of it and so God can use us for his glory. Oh, praise the Lord. Let your, let your words be with grace, seasoned with salt, Speak to people, uplift them, encourage them, but also warn them where there is warning needed. The Bible says over in Psalm 37, another good word that will help us please God and will help us to understand how to praise God. The steps of a good person are ordered by the Lord. He delights in his way. The Lord orders your steps. You're going the way the Lord has given you. He's taken from you some things that, that you didn't really need. He's given you some things that you need to use for His glory. He's helped you to find a way when there didn't seem to be a way. He loves you and His love is coming through right now and He's saying, come on, I'm holding you by your hand and I'll lead you home. I'll lead you all the way. I'll strengthen you. I'll help you. I'll uphold you by my hand. And when that person falls, he shall not utterly be cast down for the Lord upholds him. You will fall from time to time, and I will too. But we are forgiven, and we'll say, come on. The Lord says, get up, and I'm helping you up, and we're going on. And forget the past, and look forward to the future, and look for God, and look for grace, and know that He's there. Oh, dear friend, take time to be holy. Seek, oh, praise the Lord, to please God and praise God. <clears throat> Take time to be holy, speak oft with your Lord. Spend much time in secret and feed on his word. Make friends of God's children, help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing his 
blessings to seek. Yes, take time to be holy, to spend time at the feet of your beloved Lord. Take time to look to Him and pray, read His Word, and follow Him, and know that He loves you and all is well. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. You need to pray and let Jesus come in your heart if you're not a Christian and that you ask him to come in and then find you a good church and worship God with his people. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen.